This is a trip I'd wanted to do for a while. I'd heard great things about the current food and wine scene in Israel. So get ready. The next three episodes of Real Food will take us all over the country in that pursuit. I'm Mike Colomeco, Industry Insider. I've been in the business my whole life, and I know what it takes to succeed. Each week, we'll take you into real kitchens, filmed in real time. Backstage passes to a day in the life of chefs, restaurateurs, and their teams. The competition's fierce. Careers, life savings, and reputations hang in the balance. These are my people, and this is their passion. And that's what's next on Mike Colomeco's Real Food. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. I've always wanted to do a show in Israel. I'm gonna do a show in Israeli wine, the Israeli wine scene. It's kind of blowing up these days, but you can't do wine without food. So to that end, I've enlisted Gotti Pelig. Absolutely. I'm Red's Bakery, New York, 16th Street. If you don't know, now you know. Noor, Flatiron, fantastic restaurant. Absolutely, and I'm so excited you decided to join me in Israel. I've been throwing this idea at you for a few years now, and I'm so Your excited. Your dad here. lives across the street. My dad lives across the street, and why do I want to start in this place? Is for that very reason. They have great food, it's a beautiful place, but they give a level of hospitality to my father that you could not imagine. Your sister's great, she's wonderful, she's charismatic, she doesn't want to be on camera. She doesn't want to be on so camera. So you've been thrown under the bus, you are now the, exactly. the official speaker she for the spot. She always does that to me. <laughs> so tell me about this spot. Well, this is a very neighborhood place, and we know all the customers here. It's kind of regular crowd. People come here in the morning, we have very special coffee, everything here is specifically to this place. And at night, we have a big collection of wine. So this is a Jerusalem bagel toasted in a panini press. And here they do it with a beautiful Israeli, we call it yellow cheese, a little pesto, tomato, and it is a thing of absolute beauty. It smells fantastic. We do our own pastries here, uh, which is the famous Israeli burekas, uh, which is amazing. We bake everything here. And we also we have brioches and cookies and stuff. This is uh, feta cheese and spinach. Super crispy. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. And butter. <laughs> yeah, in the dough, yeah. And butter. And butter. Man, did I mention butter? <laughs> we have Israeli breakfast, which is kind of simple. It's Israeli chopped salad. You and I are gonna walk through Israel. We're gonna see the salad pop up at breakfast. We're gonna see it pop up at lunch. It's gonna be at dinner. It's everywhere. And it makes a lot of sense. This is a country that is founded on agriculture and great agriculture. It's cucumbers, it's tomatoes, it's onions. They're not covered, there are no reductions. There's nothing to hide them. It's just the flavors of those vegetables. And in Israel, they are so flavorful that it makes for a really great dish. Cucumbers, tomatoes, onions, lettuce, lemon, olive oil, that's it. There's no special dressing, nothing. Just super simple, super clean. You can add tahini to that, and, uh, and that's it. I mean, that's a fantastic lunch. Yeah. I don't know if I could eat that for breakfast. For breakfast, we're gonna try it today. Ah, look at that. And we also, we have omelets, but it's tasty, it's good, it's the it's best. Healthy. It's just healthy, easy. And the omelet's like an open pan, it's not like a folded French style. No, it's no. Like a, almost looks like a frittata, but it never goes in the oven. So it's just this kind of a stirred omelet, has a little bit of color on it, mm -hmm. and that's just... And not too many eggs. This is a simple, mix the eggs, throw them on the pan, what comes out is what comes out, nothing too complicated. But like the Israeli salad, it speaks to the incredible agriculture of this country. God, now he's putting herbs in it. That's what this one's gonna have, herbs. But the reason it showcases the, ar the agriculture so beautifully is the eggs here are just delicious. They're fantastic eggs. So like the salad, you don't wanna do a lot to them. 
Israeli breakfast. And you got your most typical, beautiful Israeli salad that you can imagine. Not a day goes by in this country that I don't eat this. Start the day like this and you're going places. Life is just easy. Chill, quiet, everybody knows everybody, little cafes, Absolutely. lots of arty stuff going on. It's a small city, yeah. it's a neighborhood, people walk around, we know them by name. Fun. Sounds like paradise. <laughs> Morning started great. We had one flat tire and then another one. We got past that, climbed 1,800 feet. We're in the upper Galilee. Uh, we drove way north from Tel Aviv. That's the border of Lebanon right here. So that's kind of where we are. And this vineyard's doing amazing work on a couple of fronts. First of all, they're farming biodynamically, which I absolutely applaud. That's fantastic. You can see in the vineyards, it's crazy, it's wild. That's the way it's supposed to be. And they're also resuscitating ancient varieties that grew here in Israel going back millennia. It's kind of like a project. So we have a combination of biodynamic, super clean farming, as good as it gets, with indigenous grapes that, honestly, I'm gonna taste two varieties I have never had in my life before. And they've got about 13 or 14 more in the pipeline. We are about uh, to the west, about 10 miles to the uh, Mediterranean shore. And in a short, few hundred meters to the Lebanese border. It's crazy. And the elevations, how many feet? 1,800 feet. Yeah, 1,800 feet. So, and you can feel it. It's, it. Today's a really hot day down there somewhere, almost pushing 90. We've had this breeze the whole time we're here. That's typical. That's typical, a nice breeze, uh, which is uh, cool from the uh, Mediterranean. Uh, and in the winter, it's cold. It's extremely cold here. We're doing, running a project of reviving the indigenous species of, of Israel. This land was producing wine thousands of years ago. It is not just because of, uh, of 900 years of, of Ottoman and Moorish regime that was here that banned winemaking, that all the natural grapes that were growing here uh, disappear. Maybe, who knows, some of the, those grapes uh, migrated to, uh, to Europe and, and they are the starting of, of what we know, the, the Vitis vinifera that we know. Right. I have some, have some very interesting stuff for you here. I think things I've never tasted before, so this always gets interesting. The Marawi, that's the indigenous species that uh, is planted here. This is a cooperation between us and a Palestinian grower. And we purchased grape from him and it's beautiful. Uh, these are relatively old vines, about, I would say about 15 to 20 year old, it's hard to tell. They are grown uh, on um, overhead arbor. Mm. So it's a beautiful place to come. We, when I come to, to, to see the grower, we sit underneath the vine and have coffee and, uh, and, and chat. And it's just a, a beautiful place. It's been aged for about six months in old barrels, four to five years and uh, we don't want the, um, too much influence on the oak, on, uh, on this gentle wine. So it's a very um, light citrusy, um, with a hint of, uh, of white pitch, yeah. but with a lot of uh, minerality into it. Kind of a melon. And in the mouth, it's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful wine. Can we buy this in New York? No. Yes. W really? Yes. Yeah. Available in New York. <laughs> we do all the biodynamic uh, treatments. We keep it biodynamic. It's not a manicured vineyard. We leave the natural habitat and the natural uh, weeds that grows. We just mow them, we don't spray them. And we encourage the uh, population of the bugs and everything. Right. I believe not for the quality of the grapes, for the quality of the, of the people and the land that it's, it's important to do. What you're doing is so much more labor intensive. It's a much more labor intensive. But you know, you, you, come, you come in the winter and you see the, the, the bloom, the different colors of, the, uh, of, of uh, what's growing in between the rows, fills your heart. The next one is the, uh, the red counterpart of the Marawi, called Bituni. It's a native uh, grown uh, variety, belong to the country, and we just try to do our best with it. Yeah, don't get in the way. It has a light color. Yep. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's okay, that's, that's a grape. Um, very fruity. You'll taste it. It resembles a little bit of, uh, of Gamay or Blanc yeah. Frankish or yeah. a little bit Pinot Noir. Those light and interesting grapes. Yeah, it's got that, those beautiful floral notes of Gamay, but almost a bit of leather like Pinot Noir, almost mm -hmm. Nebbiolo. 
Also, age only for six months in old barrels. We don't want the barrel to uh, overcome the nice purple fruits that it has. This is delicious. We do have a block of 13 different varietals that the researcher from Ariel found and collected from isolated and remote places in, in Israel. They combed the country north to south and they found in creeks, on trees, in deserted area, uh, vines that uh, survived all those years and they took cuttings. They sent them to the University of Milan for DNA fingerprinting to see that they are unique and genuine. And now we're slowly starting to put it back into the vineyard, making wine out of it, and hopefully we will see, you know, like the Greek head Assertikos, maybe we'll have something else <laughs> no, in it's, Israel. It's such an exciting project. It's amazing. What a pleasant surprise this was to come up here and get this story. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you very much, Mike. Gotti, where am I? Mike, you are at Hakosem. Hakosem in Hebrew means the magician. And between us, we have the magician himself, Arik. Every Israeli will have an opinion on what is the best falafel in their neighborhood. What's the best falafel in Tel Aviv? It's like pizza in New York. And for me, there's no doubt this is the best falafel in Tel Aviv, maybe in all of Israel. Today, you have uh, or hummus place or falafel place. Not, not both. But not both. And, uh, and then I said to myself, um, why can't we have both? This is the same, the, the same ingredients. I start uh, collecting the best ingredients you can for this kind of restaurant. All the ingredients, it's top ingredients you can have in Israel or the world. How many ingredients are there in your hummus? In the hummus, we have chickpea, trini, salt, lemon, that's there, it. There's no place to hide. No place to hide. Right, the we do it uh, nine times a day. Every two hours we make our uh, new hummus. It's health food, it's super food. It's vegan, it's healthy, it's fresh. If you use fresh oil, uh, fresh chickpeas, the falafel, for example, we do it 16 times a day. This is our machine for making it's falafel. Crazy, low tech. It's, it's, it's beautiful. I, I think it's a piece of art. It is a piece of art. You have this small button. I will show you how we make it. So, like every 45 minutes, we make a, a, a new, batch. New, new batch. And uh, so it's, it's fresh. So when it's fresh, it's with just chickpeas, fresh garlic, fresh pretzel, coriander, cumin. Everything is fresh on the spot. 16 times a day, so, and the oils change every day, so when you take the bite, So it's clean, like, so beautiful. Simple and delicious. Simple and, and delicious. And healthy. And healthy. Now we make the falafel. So the first of all, we put some hummus inside. Then I put some garlic, spicy. I put my secret eggplant, three falafel balls. And then we put some salads, fresh salad, onion, pretzel, some cabbage and some pickles. We put tahini sauce on the top and we do it again. And once again, everything. A little bit of salad, two falafel balls, onion, pretzel, cabbage, and some pickles. And then we put again some tahini sauce. And Michael, please, voila. Your shawarma, what's the meat? Shawarma, it's uh, from Turkey and fed of lamb. Uh, we put uh, inside turkey and inside the turkey we put fed of lamb inside. What's the fat on top that's dripping down? Fed of lamb. This is fat lamb, fat of course, of you can smell it. Yes, and it's uh, the turkey and the fat together. It's uh, beautiful. It's crazy. And the, the first we put some uh, hummus inside. We put some garlic sauce, some spicy. We put our secret eggplant. Now we put some pretzel. Parsley. Some parsley, onion, some salad. The Israeli salad. Israeli salad. Now we put the shawarma. We put the chini. Chini is uh, from sesame. Sesame lemon water. And amba. Amba is uh, from a uh, mango. It's a bit of uh, mango sauce with spicy. Ooh la la. And that could feed two people. Three people, really. If you're sensible. It's amazing. So this treat with the restaurant, we're trying to put our hands in the best ingredients there is. Thank you, chef. And congratulations on your success. It's fantastic. Next stop, Barkan Segal, one of the largest, if not the largest, winery in Israel, boasting every modern tool and bit of technology that you can imagine. 
They own well over 5,000 acres of vineyards, stretching from the Galilee in the north to the desert in the south, producing a whopping 10 million bottles a year. We started many years ago, and I'm, I'm really happy to lead the biggest winery of Bakan and Segal here in Israel, 2,500 hectares. 25% uh, of the market share. And this is a great adventure, you know, because the biggest challenge for me as the leader also in Israel is to bring all the wineries all together to move forward and to sell Israeli wines all around the world. Of course, Bakan and Segal, but we have this role as a leader to help, to support, the whole and to make it happen. Uh, Israel is considered the high-tech uh, nation, yeah. but we are using some high I take in, in our wine making, but we believe that the, it's the soil and the roots and the local climate that makes the difference. And we are actually rediscovering our own terroir, studying it and exploring it. It's a funny thing because we are one of the uh, most ancient countries in the world to produce wine. And on the other end, we only started in about 1882 the, uh, to rediscover the local uh, industry. And basically we've been to, to, to a few different revolutions and we still, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing uh, process. Marawi is an ancient Israeli white variety, almost uh, extinct. Thankfully, we were able to, uh, to uh, find some, uh, some old blocks that remain and actually to also to replant. And Marawi, we believe it is at least 2,000 years old. We knew that some of the very ancient varieties from the King David era are still out there. Just before these disappear, we got, got it. it located. Yeah, it. Did, yeah. Ran the DNA, found out it wasn't the Chardonnay ran, or something. Yeah, ran the DNA, test on it, find out there's nothing like it. It's local. It's from this area, and you're tasting one of the the two wines in the entire world that are made from this Marawi grape, Marawi variety. Pretty amazing. Yeah. I think it's very challenging, but we can do wines that are very food friendly, very refreshing and mineral without being too heavy. And we can do that even in climates such as the Israeli climate. Right, we're fighting with the heat all the time. This is wonderful, super. Thank you. When you think Israel, you can think culture, because it's like a melt pot of people coming yeah. from all around the world, right. uh, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, North America, North Africa. So it's really a melt pot of cultures that you can find and discover now in the foods and also now in the wine business. This is what is exciting. Bravdo is a family-run winery with roots going back over a century. We'll do a tasting in the vineyards in an area known to produce wine going back to King Solomon's time. This is partnership of two families that came here in the first immigration of Jews to Israel in the late 19th century. We are going back five generations. Well, we believe that everything starts in the vineyard. So You're farmers. You mean, yes. And uh, no, but today we, uh, to be farmer is not like uh, 20 generations ago. Yes? You need to be uh, very accurate, focus. You need to know what you're doing because when you plant vineyard, it is a lot of investment. And you know this uh, vineyard, you want this vineyard to serve you for at least 30, 35 years. So you need to uh, choose the right uh, vine how it is integrated in the soil, in the climate, in what uh, the French call terroir, how it is well integrated mm -hmm. inside. We're drinking Cabernet Sauvignon. 90% Cabernet Sauvignon and 10% Petit Verdot. But it's really soft. Yes. You've really got the tannins under control. Yes. N not a lot of toast on the oak. How much time on oak? It is one year on oak, but uh, only 25% is new oak and the rest is uh, used oak. And uh, in principle, what we are, we are doing in the red wines, we are doing in the beginning cold maceration. It means instead of starting mm -hmm. the first fermentation, immediately like most of the wines, we are chilling down the mast to four or five degrees. Right, for and, how long? Uh, keep it for 48 hours. Let some uh, tannins, soft tannins, gentle tannins, and also the anthocyanins, the color, let them go release slowly uh, from the skins because those components doesn't like alcohol. And uh, this is, of course, efforts from, in terms of energy and uh, to cool down everything online after harvest immediately, but I think it's worth it. And we are still young industry here, so we are in a process of trial and error. And one of the most important things is really to know, for example, what variety to plant where. 
and we are trying all the time to keep the tradition from one side, but to look forward and to be with the most top technology in both places, in the vineyard and also in the winery. Uzeria came highly recommended and it did not disappoint. I really admire this chef, her talent and her passion. She's a chef chef. This is a casual spot with seating at the bar where we ate and a dozen or so tables that are always packed. Uzeri uh, are very uh, happy and uh, very informal places. So I wanted that vibe for my place. Before I opened Uzeria, I was a chef of a tapas bar for 10 years. It was way more formal. And I wanted a place that will be very easygoing, a place where you can uh, come and just have a glass of ouzo with a small bite or, and uh, have fun. Have fun with the food also. I, I wanted the food to be, uh, I call it happy food. This is the moussaka. So this is classic Greek. It is not classic. Okay. <laughs> it has, uh, instead of potatoes, which are the classic, I put parsnip. Jerusalem artichoke. I was guessing you that's what you did. I don't know why. I was looking at you thinking there's Jerusalem artichoke on this. Jer Jerusalem artichoke, and it has a lot of uh, parmesan in the bachamel and between the layers. Gotcha. Beautiful. Right there, where you can see the light, is Levinsky Market. Levinsky Market is a very um, beautiful spice market. Owners of the shops are from the Mediterranean area, from Turkey. And uh, the atmosphere around here with all these small establishments where people come for a beer and uh, just a little bit of meze, I loved it. I mean, I, it really drew me to open a place around here. What's the asparagus sitting on? Garlic puree. I cook the garlic with the potatoes and then I puree it with olive oil, a lot of olive oil. And it is served with uh, toasted almonds. Mm. We make our pastas here. Really? In-house? Yeah. Uh, in Squid ink. Right. Squid ink. The sauce for the pasta is sardines, yellow cherry tomatoes confit, and fish stock. So the pasta itself is uh, maltagliette. Yeah, I see. Big format. We make our own ricotta. House-made ricotta. It's great. Yeah, and we serve it with a little bit of arisa. You know arisa? Moroccan, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Moroccan, that beautiful. And some parsley. Typical tagine garnish. Yeah. What is this thing called Israeli cuisine? Israel, as you must know, is a mix of cultures. I get my influence from all around, mostly from our ingredients. So we have beautiful vegetables, amazing olive oil, really nice seafood, great Meat now, and lamb, of course. So ingredients take the stage, and, uh, and I only, you know, play with it. Covenant is a new biodynamic producer spearheaded by Bay Area winemaker Jeff Morgan, who started this project in 2011. Syrah is his baby. I started Covenant California in 2003 uh, in Napa Valley, but I came to Israel in 2011 just to look around because, you know, I'm Jewish and you know, needed to come to Israel. And uh, I came up here to the Galilee and saw these amazing soils, volcanic soil, very rich in iron mixed with limestone. And it reminded me of the soils that make the greatest wines in the Rhone Valley in France, also some of our best wines in the Napa Valley. Extraordinary wine-friendly soils. And of course, we all know that winemaking kind of started here in the Middle East some, I don't know, 5,000, 6,000 years ago. Obviously, something's working here, and I wanted to be a part of it. I tasted a lot of really good Israeli wines back in 2011. By 2013, I was making wine from this vineyard, which is called Sivon, and it's part of a, a kibbutz called Sivon. It's farmed biodynamically which is um, beyond organics. And uh, not surprisingly, this is uh, where our best Syrah grapes come from. The soils are like France, but the climate's like California. And so we get very ripe grapes, very rich, very full-bodied wines. And if there's some varietal like Argamon that can uh, bring in a little more elegance, it's great to use as a blender. There's Marawi also, which makes terrific, also light, uh, fresh tasting wines, but I'm from California <laughs> and also you got to sell this stuff in the marketplace and uh, also um, the, the, the varietal that's really inspired me uh, here in Israel 
uh, despite the fact that there's some terrific Cabernets made here, is Syrah uh, as a red wine. It's just beautiful. And uh, we also make Cabernet here, but it's never quite as good as my Syrah, so I blend the Cabernet into my second label, um, but called the Blue Sea, uh, because we do have a Blue Sea here as well. It's like being back in Napa Valley in the, in the, in the 80s, in the 90s. It was kind of a pioneer mentality, very exciting, and I brought up my kids in Napa Valley and there was this energy trying to build something that's now quite established. It's very similar here in Israel now. Everybody's discovering stuff that we discovered, you know, in California, and maybe they discovered in, in France or Italy a long time ago, but it's new and exciting here and we're learning how to apply French and uh, New World techniques to our vineyards in a way that I think is allowing us to harness and will allow us to continue to harness the best of these vineyards. Well, stay tuned. We've got two more shows with a lot more food and wine from Israel. This is going to be fun. Mike Colomeco's Real Food is brought to you by the continuous, generous support of the following underwriters. Extra virgin olive oil from Colavita, an Italian family brand. Rachel Ray's signature specialty food line, designed for preparing meals at home. 